One of the most comprehensive papers on patellar tendinopathy is titled Patellar Tendinopathy, Clinical Diagnosis, Load Management, and Advice for Challenging Case Presentations. This was by Peter Malieris and others, and they laid out a four-stage process for an athlete getting back from patellar tendinopathy. In the first stage, they are only doing isometric contractions, something like a leg extension, three to five sets, 30 to 45 seconds. In the second stage, they're doing isotonics along with isometrics, but the isotonics are starting with like a 15 rep max down to an eight rep max of squats, split squats, deadlifts, all these exercises that are gonna work the knee extensor mechanism. The third stage, athletes get back to store and release activities. Would That would be like acceleration, deceleration, change of direction, jumping, landing. And in the fourth stage, they get back to sport. Something that's interesting in isometric and isotonic phases is they recommend training both sides even if you have a unilateral patellar tendinopathy. This was something I asked Ebony Rio on my podcast, I haven't put it up yet, is why would we train the right side if we have a left side patellar tendinopathy? And she said, when you have a left side patellar tendinopathy, just as an example, you don't just want to kill the left side. You also want to train the right side. When you have an injury, you don't just want to focus only on the injury. You want to load both sides pretty much equally because when you get back to sport, the entire kinetic chain is going to be be involved and you don't want to have one side that is highly trained and one side that is not highly trained. Also, if you have a left side patellar tendinopathy, by loading the right side, you're getting the cross-education effect, you're getting a strength effect on the injured side because the brain is always involved. So those are two reasons why you would train both sides even if only one side is hurting. You want to address the kinetic chain, quadricep strength, the knee extensor strength on both sides, and you want to train the non-injured side to strengthen the injured side by the cross-education effect. You could do bilateral stuff like squats, but these are not the best because the brain is going to shut it, shut down strength to the injured side. So doing unilateral stuff like leg extension, like split squat is going to be better.